And now Hillary's got another example of theatrical disasters. Um, uh, uh, this time it's to do with audiences. Um, modern audiences who aren't feeling particularly well disposed towards a play or a player usually limit the signs of their dis disapprobation to fairly genteel booing. In days gone by, audiences could be much more openly hostile. Early in the 19th century, Edmund Keane caused what became known as the Boston Riot when his loutish behaviour and reluctance to appear before them provo provoked the audience to tear out their seats and smash the theatre windows and lights. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's Sounds quite, fun. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. W and um, when stink bombs were thrown at the cast of an anti-war off-off-Broadway play in 1966, the six actors in the play, which was set in Vietnam, decided to respond by turning the other cheek. Before leaving the stage, they turned their backs on the hostile audience and lowered their trousers. Oh, nice. <laughs> and when vegetables were thrown at the cast of a pro-abortion play at Harvard University in the early 70s, the actors picked them up and threw them back. And when John Le Mesurier had an umbrella hurled at him at the end of his performance in Eugene O'Neill's play Desire Under the Elms, he caught it and kept it. After all, it was raining outside. And finally, whether with critical intent or not, history doesn't relate. But Sir Frank Benson was once attacked on stage by a black dog who entered unannounced and bit him on the leg. And Roy Castle was in a pantomime when a dog rushed onto the stage, ripped off his trousers and brought the house down. <laughs> <laughs> so who would be an actor? 